Shalom and uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, I, uh, the Lord uh, uh, has spoke to me today and said I am to give a prophetic message and I wrote it all down. That's pretty good for me because most of the time I, I'm not able to, but he gave me a, a message today and uh, it's, I'm just going to get right into it. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Uh, welcome to, uh, this is uh, our Beit Rafa broadcast. So, um, <clears throat> it's, the title is Understanding the Times and Seasons. There is so much confusion about the times and seasons we are in uh, right now. And it's caused, it's caused because of all the different, uh, all the different uh, interpretations of eschatology, which is a theological words, study of the last days or the 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 coming of the lord or the end times uh and everybody seems to have their opinion and uh there's just hundreds of different uh hundreds probably different interpretations everybody's you know say well i'm right and i'm right and so so well what it's caused is uncertainty and fear fear has come because of confusion there has been so much confusion. Well, uh, the reason why there's confusion is because there are evil spirits that try to, uh, doctrines of demons and uh, that have crept in. They've crept in. But what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? That's all that matters. My opinion doesn't matter. Uh, you know, whether I... Uh, you know, and there's there's all kinds of, uh, and people fuss and fight, God's people fussing and fighting about the, the most glorious, the great hope of our people. The great hope of the church is, the, it's what we call the, the kingdom, the fullness of the kingdom. Or Jesus said, pray thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's even confusion about that. There's confusion about, well, is the kingdom here or is it coming? And it's both. You can't have the fullness of the kingdom of God on earth without the king. The king is coming. He's the head of the body. He is the, he, he there's a time coming <laughs> when evil and sin and darkness will be uh, totally removed from the earth. Satan will be bound, be imprisoned, and that's the source of all of our troubles, all of our problems. God didn't. God's not up there, you know, throwing thunderbolts at his people, you know, like Zeus or something, you know. Well, he's, you know he's not up there trying to beat you over the head, but you have an enemy. We the this the Bible is so clear. Um, I think it was Charles Caps that said years ago, the Bible is so clear. You have to have help to misunderstand it. Well, we've had a lot of help. We've had a lot of or not help. We've had a lot of religion and confusion and false doctrines and all kinds of things. So. Before I, I get into this, I want to talk to you a little bit about, well, you know, you have your interpretation of the Bible and I have mine. Well, the uh, Peter says that the scriptures are, are of no private in, interpretation. And the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. He'll, he can, if you have, you can, you can know what's true and what's not. But before you can do that, you have to make a decision or you have to make a fundamental uh, decision. Are you go does 
God mean what he says, or does he mean some mystical, uh, allegorical, you know, oh, uh, you know, symbolic? Well, then you get in all kinds of problems about eschatology, because if you, as soon as you depart from a literal, what I mean by literal is not, uh, uh, what I mean is God means what he says. If he says, if he says uh, one thing, he doesn't mean something else. God won't lie. This book is trustworthy. And the problem we have, most of the, most of the, the vast majority of the, uh, of what's going on in the pulpits, in the churches, is we have a, a, a big problem. We've departed from the truth. And we have heaped ourselves. Teachers have itching ears. We, we don't want, we don't really want to be corrected. We don't really want to hear what God says. We don't, we want to have something to make us feel good. Well, well, Satan will accommodate you. He's a serpent. He's sly. He's cunning. And in, I think, no other area has there been so much, uh, so many, so much deception as, uh, this confusion uh, the enemy has one goal. He wants to sow so much confusion about this that we lose our hope. What is our hope? The hope, the blessed hope of the New Testament is the appearing of our Lord, the coming of the Lord, that, that uh, the fullness of times, the great, it's when, it's when, uh, yes, the kingdom is here, spiritually, in our hearts, wherever, if we obey him. Yes, yes, but there is a time coming. <laughs> There's a time coming. And I have good news for you. It's very soon. And it's not going to be mystical in the sense of it's not going to be, I wonder, you know, I wonder what. No, it's good. It's concrete. It's that heaven is coming to earth. Well, how is heaven going to come to the earth? Who's going to bring it? Uh, God's going to bring it. And then there's something else. Uh, there's another area. I don't know why I'm going this way because I have a whole thing here. But <clears throat> there's another area. There's a scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul says, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. What he means by that is in these natural bodies, we will not see the fullness of the kingdom of God come to the earth. The Lord has an event. It's called, uh, we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And this mortal shall put on immortality this corruptible shall put on we're going to receive our the fullness of our redemption is the redemption of these natural bodies we have a born again new creation seated in the heavenly places uh, inner man born again we're going to be like that forever we're perfected in our spirit we're spirit soul and body but God has a there's a there's a time period, okay? There's a times and seasons. God operates according to times and seasons. <laughs> it, it, it's not there's all you have to do is study a little bit and read, and it's as plain as the nose on your face. Not difficult to understand. Unless you believe. God means something else other than what he said. Then, then you don't know what's up and what's down, what's right and what's left. And you might as well just throw out all of the prophecies about the end times because, well, who knows? Maybe it could mean this. Maybe it could mean that. It really means this. No. And uh, no. It, God means exactly what he says, not something else. I don't know why I'm getting this adamant, except 
there's uh, uh, okay, a couple of passages. First, Tim, I'll start. Uh, well, you know me. I well, some of you know me. I I try to. I I am. I've got wonderful notes. Are you kidding? I really God. You know, he showed it to me, but he shows it to me, and then he says, "Well, I'm going to conduct the symphony. I'm going to just do. I'm going to just give me your mouth." Well, all right, you have my mouth. So thank God nobody can shut me down. Praise the Lord. They may have, been, they may have censored, you know, they may try to, to shut me out, or the Facebook or whatever, and censor me 85% uh, of those that were watching uh, disappeared because the algorithms or whatever. Well, you know what? God didn't say just preach... Just preach if all the algorithms are right. He said, he gave me an assignment. He said, go on, uh, go on uh, the Facebook Live. So as long as they'll keep me on Facebook Live, that's where I'm going to stay. Because I, you know, I'm yours to command, Lord. I don't, I, ah. anyway, praise the Lord. All right, First Timothy, let's look at this. Yes. Here we go, chapter three. I've got my the the I've got my preaching Bible with me, the one that I've used for years. You know, we didn't always have the 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 phones and the devices and all that. I I like actually I, I like the printed word. I like it. <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, chapter three, first Timothy. This is what Paul says about right now, the times we're in, okay? So this, verse one, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, that means, uh, that means uh, homosexuality, which God condemns. Without natural, natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, or no Self-control, that's what that means. No self-control in the Greek. Fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, that's haughty, proud. High-minded, that means conceited, deluded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Verse 5. Having, but having a form of godliness. I like the way uh, uh, King James put it there. Form of godliness or we have our religion but denying what? The power, the dunamis, the miracle-working resurrection power of the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and all, uh, you know, in other words, the true, the true God, they don't, they don't want, they don't want God, they don't want God in the now. They want God in the sweet by and by, and they want to make God the way they want to make God. Well, God's not going to change for you, sweetheart. You're going to change for him. And the only way to change is you have to surrender to him to come to him. You can't make yourself better. You can't earn it. You deserve an eternity in hell. That's what you richly deserve. That's what you deserve. I want justice. I want justice. Well, you're going to you're going to burn, baby, burn. That's what you want. You want justice? The soul that sins shall die. You have chosen evil. 
and the wages of sin is death. Death doesn't mean just dying when you uh, and, and 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 you you know you croak and they put your body in a in a in six feet under. That's that's a that's physical death. But eternal death is you will live on forever in torment. Well, how do I? Only way out. You have to surrender to Jesus. There's no other way. It's not negotiable. Your opinion doesn't matter. Your reality doesn't matter. Well, I have my reality. No, you don't. <laughs> you, live, you live in God's universe. He created you. You didn't create him. Who are you anyway? You're traitor, heady, high-minded. These are the people. This is the... This is... This is where the nations are right now, June 27th, Sunday afternoon, 3.38 p.m. or whatever, 2021. That's the world. That's, or that's, well, it had never changed. No, it's gotten worse. What's more is, not only has it gotten worse because there's a falling away, but um, <clears throat> it's a, it's a, a, it's like a free fall, and uh, the greatest tragedy of all is after God has given us the fullness of His grace to the nations. Where what have we done with it? We've once again turned from God and rebelled. And now we've cast off restraint. So what, you know, eh, I got my rights. Me, 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 me. I didn't plan on preaching this. I wanted to teach this. So uh, what are you going to do with that? Well, a portion of the body of Messiah, a portion of the church, hides their head in their sand hides the head in the sand. Well, and then we have a certain kind of idea that somehow we've got this magic uh, time that we're in now where utopia will come. And, uh, you know, that's not even in the Bible, by the way, but heaven on earth will come before the king comes. No, it won't come. It'll be war from here on out. But there's victory. So I want to talk to you now and uh, bring some clarity, okay? Uh, you charismatic, you know, Christians, bless your heart, living in a, a, a fantasy bubble, you got to wake up and find, you understand where we are, what time we're in, and uh, what God's getting ready to do, because it's not a mystery. God does everything, everything precisely. And it's all in the Bible. If you have a, if you can, if your heart is in a place where you are humble enough to believe the Bible and not your own version, your own interpretation. That's called exalting, that's believing lies and exalting your fantasy above what God actually says. And that's uh, why there are, is so much confusion. They've heaped to themselves in the last days. Teachers with itching ears, tell me something makes me feel good. You made your own God, you made your own traditions, you have your own music. You have your own worship. You you say, oh, I want the culture of heaven. You don't have the culture of heaven. You have a real bad version of, I mean, a poor version of uh, the world. Actually, the church is approximately seven years behind the world as far as many things. Oh, God. I didn't plan on that at all. All right, I'm going to start here. <laughs> I didn't plan on, you know, 
chewing you out. I, not my intention. But of course, I don't plan on much of anything anymore. I just as soon go on, honestly. But that's all right. It's more needful, Paul said, for me to remain for you. <laughs> so I'm gonna. I'm here. Hallelujah. Well, let's let's uh, start believing what the Bible says instead of our own uh, eschatological fantasies. Okay. Well, that that should have. All right. Now. Let's, I'll start with Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 1. Reason I have to be this way is because there are so, I have to, you know, you have to, sometimes you got to blast through to get through the concrete of your delusions. So I'm blasting. I've got, I've, I've come armed today. Chapter 5, chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians, Apostle Paul. These are the epistles. This is the new covenant. You can't squirm out of this one. Okay? Here we go. This is what I want to talk about. Oh, gosh. Help me, Lord. But of the times, verse 1, and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you for yourselves know perfectly well. What do you know? The times and seasons. Paul spent time teaching, particularly this Thessalonians church. I mean, he wrote about it, the two little letters. Boy, they're packed, though. You can't, you can't understand the end times without them. You've got to include them. All right. And what is he talking about? What's his context? Verse 2. You yourselves, you know perfectly well, you've been taught by me that the day of the Lord so comes. Okay, so he's talking about what? The day of the Lord. What is the day of the Lord? Well, you have to understand that the Bible interprets itself. Uh, we get into trouble when we start to, uh, <clears throat> when we start to just dream up whatever we think. All right, I said that already. First of all, I want to mention again, and this is review for, you know, I've, I've seen it many, say, see, God says, say it again. So, all right. There are three different groups of people according to God. Okay, three different groups of people. The three di and each one of these people groups has a different destiny. If you don't understand that, you'll be very confused. Uh, in other words, there there's three ends to these three. There's three groups of people. The three groups, according to God. Now, now you know we we have all kind of race and this and that, or we're all the same, and you know we're so confused we don't know which way's up and down, but. God says he defines the three groups of people as uh, Israel or natural Israel, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the true church or those that are born again out of that we all must be born again, the church and the wicked unbelieving nations. Okay, that's it. All right, so let me just go through. Uh, each one of these groups has a different destiny. What is the, what is God, remember, remember this, God always wins. Hallelujah. I didn't believe that. I would have just despaired, you know, but hallelujah, I don't despair because I have hope. I have hope because I know my end. Well, I'm, I'm actually a part of the, the church and I represent uh, the coming kingdom as a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, you know, but I'm actually a part of the, the born again church of the living God. All right. So, well, what is the, what is the end, destiny, 
the final outcome of Israel? Well, Paul says all Israel shall be saved. Does that mean every Jew, every descendant will be saved? No, the nation will, the, 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 the 12 tribes, their destiny, whosoever will be, you know, who there's, there's God that will judge that. And there's only one qualified judge and that's him, but he is coming as judge. Do you understand me? He's holy. Don't be caught outside of the blood of Jesus. I tell you that. I, you don't want to mess with uh, that self-righteous realm and religion. My God. So the end of Israel is what? Restoration. We, we were punished for our sins. We were uh, exiled to the nations. And we received, according to Isaiah uh, 40, I think it is, or 41, double for all our sins. We, but why? Because we were first among the nations. So we were, we actually bore, uh, we bore uh, as nationally judgment. We, we were judged because of idolatry. We turned away. But God, every single prophet in the Bible says, nevertheless, thank God for that word. I mean, nevertheless, in the last days, I will bring you back. What is this restoration? What is the end of Israel? First of all, I will restore you back to your land. Even in your unbelieving state, I'll do so. And uh, we've seen that happen. Second, I will restore you to myself spiritually. Of course, that comes through faith in Messiah and surrender to him. But, hey, I'm a signpost. I'm here. First of all, I'm still here. The fact that there's one Jew on the earth proves that there must be a God because every single generation's tried to wipe us out, especially the church or the so-called church. Nobody's hate us, hated us more than the religious uh, hate-filled uh, historic so-called believers. If you hate, you're not a believer. You, you're you in the wrong kingdom. Hatred is not a part of God. Now, what does he hate? He hates sin because it destroys the ones he loves. That's different. That doesn't mean hatred like, I hate your guts and I'm going to tear, you know. No, that's... that's uh, Wrong kingdom, wrong God. So God's a God of love. Well, we read about that. I mean, we read that masterpiece I read to you uh, of uh, Drummond. It's, it's on the last two Beit Rafa. So, all right, the destiny of Israel is restoration to the land, to Messiah, to God. Hallelujah. And the restoration of Israel includes the kingdom. Who is the kingdom going to be restored to anyway? Well, it's not some mystical kingdom out there in the, you know, what's a kingdom? It's not the Baptist kingdom. It's not the, it's not some, you know, your particular, what, what kingdom? It's the kingdom. It's the throne of Israel. It's the David, Davidic, it's the descendants of David. God, God ordained and chose the Jewish people to be the ones that he brings his kingdom through. What is he going to restore? He's going to restore the kingdom to whom? Israel. Just like he says. God doesn't mean somebody else. It means it. Well, what do you mean? Well, they're all messed up. Well, they came back. We've come back unbelieving. But uh, uh, not all of us. More and more of us are believing. And one thing for sure, uh, we're not going away, sweetheart. We're still here. Well, you know, you're, there's neither Jew nor Greek now. We're, we're sort of, well, wait a minute. 
Are you white? Are you black? Are you Spanish? Are you Chinese? Are, well, God says Jew and Gentile. He doesn't say, he, he says you're either part of the nations or you're part of Israel. Well, you think you're something special and better? No, we're worse than you. <laughs> but God chose us. Why? To show that he's a covenant keeper. He, he, because he's, he's promised Abraham. He promised Abraham. That's why. Well, he's God. He can choose anybody he wants. He doesn't need your vote. Especially you heady, high-minded uh reprobate and deceived so-called Christians. Give me a break. <laughs> it's time for us to hear the truth. You don't like me? I really don't care. You didn't, you didn't call me. I don't need your vote either. You didn't anoint me. And I've seen a whole lot of people. I mean, I've walked alone a long time. And you know what? If I have to walk alone, no, that doesn't mean we don't have friends and I have lots of we were wonderful people. I, I'm talking about uh, people don't want to hear the truth anymore, especially most Christians, so-called. I'm not your judge. Just read the Bible and believe it for a change. Start with yourself. Repent. Start with your own wicked, half-hearted, idolatrous heart. Start with that. Then, then you can see clearly enough to help other people, maybe. They probably won't. Ah, God, help me. So... All right, the, the second somebody's at the door, my window's open. Oh, well, I'm going to preach anyway. The true church is those who are born again. So there's, what's the end of the church? What is the end of, what's God's, the, the end of the church is glorification. We shall be changed. <laughs> we shall be caught up. We shall be raptured. That's the great hope. That's the thing we're looking forward to. Well, does that mean... No, uh, what? Are, who's there? Anyway. So, um... <clears throat> This really, this really is live. <clears throat> That's called distraction. That doesn't matter. Thank God. I'm an authority here. At least on this Facebook Live I am. Nobody can shut me down. Praise the Lord. Been shut down for 30 years mostly because the church doesn't want to let the Holy Spirit lead. They want to be in charge and do their own thing. Well, Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He'll leave you alone, let you do your own thing. Well, we've certainly seen enough of our own thing. Wonder why the world doesn't beat our door down to get in to all this grace. Well, maybe you ought to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Stop doing your own thing. True church. Glorification, hallelujah. The redemption, perfection. In other words, what's going to, what's, how can the kingdom come? The kingdom cannot come on the earth until the glorification of our bodies. What is Jesus, that's what Paul said, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That means you can't have all of it now. You can have 
some of it. You can have some dominion. You can, uh, yes, God has, has said, go into all the world, make disciples of the nations. And we're in this particular time now called the grand finale, I guess, or the time of the fulfillment of the Great Commission. The church failed. The church has totally failed to reach the nations for 2,000 years. But God never fails. And he said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. And then what will come? The end will come. What is the end? Well, uh, hallelujah. The end is Jesus is going to come to earth as, uh, as the son of David, son of God, our Jewish Messiah, the savior of the world. Hallelujah, and he's going to reign. And he shall reign. Of course, he's reigning in heaven now, but, but uh, he's not sovereign in the earth. You know why? Because this time lease is still ticking. But it's, well, anyway, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. I want to talk to you now. Uh, the other, what's the other destiny? The wicked, unbelieving nations. There's a whole lot of them. Jesus was a, are a few that be saved, you know? Oh, we're all going to, no. He said, uh, strive to enter the narrow gate. Broad is the way. Great, I mean, wide and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many, you know the difference between few and many? Jesus said few will be saved. Well, that's because <clears throat> few will choose him. Why is that? I don't know. Oh, I, you know, I weep over that. That's not a, there's no, there's no, uh, that, that's, uh, God weeps. Uh, there was a story, uh, I think it was Rev Nachman or one of the Yiddish, uh, or Shlomo Karlbach, uh, would, gave the story of the, the sea of tears that God cries. He's in love with people that refuse him, refuse his love. Why? I don't know. But he defines them, all you, all you 21st century humanists that think you, you, you as wicked, evil, unbelieving, deserving an eternity of torment because of how, how uh, the, because of the high crimes, the treat, the, 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 all, it, all, you know what it is? It's just, just payment for uh, reaping what you sowed. That's how evil man is. That's how much the fall. I, the Bible doesn't, the Bible condemns the whole human race. Did you know that? I mean, even George, whatever, not sorry, John MacArthur got that one right. Uh, he says something's right. Uh, it does. Read the first three chapters of Romans. That's why Yeshua, Jesus, had to come. He went, he took our penalty. But we don't have to. We don't have to receive that. We can be stubborn and rebellious and, and uh, you know, dance all the way to hell. There's a whole lot of us. Uh, you know, the, the sad thing is, what happens is after a while, there's another scripture, it says, uh, in the last days, uh, men's conscience will be seared like a hot iron and you don't get convicted anymore. That means you get so... You get so hardened in your heart. You don't want to come back. And you're so deluded that you, it says the whole world will believe a delusion. And now, you know, uh, now, uh, I mean, the, 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 the stage is set. Was well, it all gloom and doom? No, this is a glorious time. I'm thrilled. This is the most exciting time to be alive. There's, there's more, God is moving so powerfully, and I have total, I have total confidence. Uh, as long as I'm to be on this earth, praise the Lord. 
<clears throat> we're going to occupy till he comes. That's what Jesus said. So there's no escapism here. But is there a great escape? Absolutely. You can't, <clears throat> you can't mix these three identities, these three people groups. You can't mix them. No. Israel will be restored. The church shall be glorified. The wicked nations shall be what will happen. The Bible says, Psalm says, and the wicked nations shall be turned into hell. And hell is just the temporary, then it's the lake of fire. Doesn't cease, you don't cease to exist. Uh, there'll be eternal burning there. It will never stop and you'll, you will be alive and aware more than you are now. Either you'll be with God or you, who's your father? There's just two fatherhoods. It's fatherhood of God. You must be born into that family. You can't earn it. You can't be good enough. You have to receive the gift and you have to surrender your life. And the Bible also says that there'll be fruit if you're really if you've really been born again you're going to abide in him obey him and live holy because the bible also says without holiness no one will see god <clears throat> so let's just uh, get our boundaries clear here somebody needs to draw some lines that's what the prophet's ministry is about this is light this is darkness this is good, this is evil. I'd be nicer and sweeter if it didn't take this much to blast through your unbelief. But it, you know what? Sometimes you just gotta get blasted through. Well, you're just hateful. No, I'm not. This is love. This is love. Rescuing you from eternal torment I love you enough to warn you. Well, I don't believe it. It doesn't matter, sweetheart, whether you put you believe or not. Welcome to spiritual reality. This is the way it is. Well, I don't like you. I, it doesn't matter. They didn't like Jesus either. They killed the, the 12. They tortured and killed the, the, the 12. Uh, you know, the, the original, uh, all but John and down through history, when when you get blunt enough to actually preach the Bible, uh, you will ruffle more than ruffle. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna get more and more clear who's who's really preaching for Jesus and who's not. If you don't get it, if there's no if there's no correction, no conviction, no no. Uh, you know, you just. Uh, uh, you feel like going to your favorite psychotherapist and please give me something. God wants to fulfill you and bless you. Well, he does. Oh, absolutely. And there is healing, I mean, from the drama of trauma. We've all been, you know, yeah. But you know what? Life is war down here. That's what it actually is. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to talk to you about the times and seasons, okay? I'm just going to kind of uh, hopefully focus on this. I don't have time to give you scripture for everything, but you can look it up for yourself. Again, I, I go from the premise that God actually means what he says in the Bible, not something allegorical. He doesn't mean something else. All right. So uh, what are times and seasons? God does everything according to cycles of time and seasons. It says in the first chapter of the Bible, Genesis, uh, uh, the times and seasons will be. Uh, uh, what is he given to show those times? Well, part of it is the stars and the planets, the universe, precise time clock. God is extremely precise. He's not vague. But you, the thing about, the thing about truth is it's not a matter of in doctrine. Okay, what's right doctrine, what's not? It's not a matter of 
how smart you are, how much you study, because you can miss it by a mile, because it's not that kind of knowledge. You have to stay on your face before God, stay humble, and you have to, you have to be taught by uh, our teacher that leads us into all truth. You can't interpret the Bible out of your own uh, head, because you, I mean, you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, they got their own. The Mormons are so twisted in their doctrine. I, I can't, I don't understand. Like I said, the Bible's so easy to understand. You have to have help to miss out. Well, Satan is the ultimate. He has the greatest weapon he has. He doesn't, is deception. He's a liar. And he'll smooth talk you, uh, and I've seen a, a lot of beautiful, what a number of beautiful. See, Yeshua said, if you continue in my word, you have to, this is a daily thing. You have to take up your cross every day, deny yourself and follow Jesus, or you're going to get deceived, sweetheart. And eventually, five years from now, you'll be out in some primrose path and think you're right and you're, you, the, you, you're cold as ice and your heart got hard and the, they bo the devil's really good at boiling your frog slowly. And uh, don't think you're immune from it. Well, I'm better than, no, you're not better. You got to stay. You got, that's why every day, judge yourself, be humble, stay in God's word, pray in tongues. Well, I don't believe in praying. Well, then you need to change your believing because God gave you a way to pray supernaturally because you don't know how to pray, and you don't know what to pray, you miserable religious outfit, you. You're just praying everything out of your mind. No wonder. No wonder there's no power in your life. No wonder there's no demonstration. Well, tongues are, yeah, depends on which kind of tongues you're talking about. You're talking about tongues, the gift of tongues and interpretation. That's not, everybody doesn't do that. But everyone, Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all, and forbid not to speak with tongues. Tongues is the great weapon. Tongues will get you into truth whether your head wants you to or not. Well, how do I do it? Well, I don't have time for that. Other, You know what? If you want it, you can have it. If you don't have it, it's because you don't want it. It's that simple. All right, five times. I want to talk to you about five times and seasons. Okay, first of all, I want to define something. What is latter days? What is last days? It says, because in the last days, perilous times will come, uh, and all those things. What is the last days? Well, the last days mean several things in the Bible. First of all, uh, the, there's, you have to understand God's framework of the times, the, the grand, the skeleton, if you will, the, the grand time, the, 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 the time cycle that encompasses all time cycles is a 7,000 year period. From the time God created Adam until Yeshua sits, Jesus sits on the throne and there, well, no, there's six days. There's 6,000 years. 6,000 years, exactly. Now, we don't know exactly when it started, and so we can't define exactly when it finishes. And of course, no man knows the day or the hour. But the Bible commands you are to know the times and seasons. If you don't understand the times and seasons, you are in the dark, sweetheart. Former days, or uh, 3,500 years, former days. So in the, the latter days are the last days. That's the last three and a half. You divide seven. Seven days, this thousand years. A day is a thousand years. When you're thinking about the coming of the Lord, or the appearing, the kingdom. The coming of the kingdom. <laughs> okay, so the latter days would be the time before... 
and approximately I, i'm not saying when there's another there's another uh uh, Daniel interprets the last days. So I, you know, it, we have a little, maybe not more clarity. Some things, sometimes things have parallel, more than one meaning, okay? Because the prophets uh, apply it differently. Okay, so the the former day, the latter day, it, there's something that divides it. It's called, uh, Daniel calls it the times of the Gentiles. Or, uh, God separates the 7,000 years based on when Israel was in captivity until the time we were banished in exile. So that was the first time around the time of Nebuchadnezzar. So the times of the Gentiles, remember the, the head of uh, the, 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 the image, the head of gold was this Babylon and the... the the four or five Gentile empires. Well, that means when, when, uh, <clears throat> when the nations had the rule over the land of Israel, and Israel was banished and judged. So, all right. So that's the latter days. Really begins according to uh, the prophets of with the reign of Nebuchadnezzar and the kingdom of Babylon in the first captivity. Well, Daniel was there, you know. All right. Okay, so God, what does he do? He stops the clock. But there's three different time periods. There's the times. First of all, we I talked about the times of the Gentiles. Okay. So the last days, just generally, is the last half of God's, uh, that's, that, uh, six thousand seven thousand year period all right okay what is there's something called the times of israel okay and particularly uh, daniel separates these two periods the times of israel and and other prophets if you study it out you, you can find it again you can't make you can't play around with your allegories. As soon as you do, I don't know what's up, and you know what? Then I can't trust the Bible anymore. The Bible interprets itself. You want to know, you have the right heart, you can know. Do you think you know? Well, you go. I, I'm, I am to proclaim. I'm not to give you my opinion. My opinions don't matter. My opinions really don't matter. Most of the time, they're not right. Okay? This is not negotiable. This is Bible. This is, it is written. It is written. Okay? Times of Israel. Times of Israel started according to the first covenant and the, 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 the great uh, rabbis. And, and the God goes by Israel's calendar. If you want to see precise times and seasons and really understand them, you have to first relate it to Israel. If you don't want if you don't want to acknowledge the chosenness of natural Israel, then uh and the and uh then you won't be able to make heads or tails of it. If you want if you feel like the church somehow swallowed it up, replaced it, and, well, no, it's 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 a matter of being included in, not a matter of swallowing up. And uh, you you have to understand this too. This is a Jewish book about a Jewish savior, the redemption of man. God chose Abraham and the Jewish people forever. Forever! Why? He's God. Did we ask to be chosen? Absolutely. You know, Tevya. Could you choose somebody else for a while? Why? Because the devil is, you know, Satan's heads of the guns on us. And, you know, he's, why? Because he knows more than the church. He knows where the kingdom's going to come. 
Well, well, we're, we're doing it together. There's two peoples of God. We're one in Messiah. Yes, spiritually we're one. Remember, you're not just a spiritual being. You're a, you're a natural being and a spiritual being. The kingdom has to come from heaven to earth. That's the story of the Bible. How is it going to come? Through Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah. And what's he going to restore with it? All his brothers and sisters, his family. God is a family. If you will, the first family. And the way Paul described it is how we, in our modern adoption, well, you know, I'm adopted, I'm brought in. Yes, you are. And, you know, we adopt, a, say we adopt a child from somewhere, like Haiti or something, you know. And, um, <clears throat> and that's a wonderful thing, but that's just as much a son or daughter. The one thing it doesn't do is swallow it up. It doesn't mean the natural son and daughter doesn't still have the same. God can add, but he, this, I, it's always about trying to take it. Well, I'm the one. No, you're not the one. God had mercy on you. You, so basically we could boil this whole thing down to one thing. You blessed blood-washed, born-again Gentile nations. You got into our deal. We didn't get into your deal. Let's keep this straight. And God does keeps this division in spite of the oneness of the new kingdom because we're all different. You know, God did make everybody the same. What's the, the there's different purposes. There's different reasons. If you don't understand that in the Bible, first of all, the Bible, you know, I, I love the word of faith. I am. I am a word of faith man, okay? And we know that we're to live. It's written to the church, the, you know, the, 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 the revelation of grace, that this is written for us now, you know. The Romans, sorry, Acts chapter 2, really, but Romans through... Uh, Jude is written uh, particularly and and applies to us in the new covenant. And we need to interpret everything based upon that. However, if you know how much of that book is that? All right, here we go. Romans, I'm going to show you something. I'll even include Acts chapter 2 because that's when the that's when the Holy Spirit was poured out. Okay, Acts chapter 2, 2 through, through, okay, here we go. Just hold on a minute. You know, I'm giving you everything. All, I'll tell you what, I'll bring it all the way through Revelation chapter 3. Because it, that's, Yeshua spoke to the, the church all the way to the resurrection. Here we go. There you go. Now, if that's all you needed, then our Bible would be that thick, that much. I'm giving you the whole, the whole thing. I mean, you know, that's it. That's all that matters. Well, then why did God give all the rest of it? Look, look at the rest of the book. Look at it. Now, Paul said all scriptures given, all of it, both covenants given. And it's the truth, and God means exactly what he says. So you have to understand something. Some things pass through the cross, into the, and, and they are fulfilled. They are, like justification <laughs> by grace, things like that. Uh, that God, God, we, God lives in us, not in, a, not in the Holy of Holies anymore. That's a progression of the glory of God into the earth. That's a whole other area. I, I did a, a study on that. It's in my book, Revelations for the Midnight Hour, of uh, 
man's return to glory or the, or the, the you know and then the temples of the lord and you can see the progression of the scriptures more and more of god comes to earth till finally we join together he moves here <laughs> that's it so god is in a place called heaven and uh he wanted heaven on earth adam committed high treason sold out satan an outlaw took ownership of this period of time. Seven days or 7,000 years. Adam, God gave Adam dominion. In other words, God was on the inside looking out. And like Pastor Jerry Zirkel, he said, he's saying, I'd rather, he's like Noah. He said, Noah, you know what Noah sang when he got on the boat? <laughs> I'd rather be on the inside looking out, then on the outside looking in. <laughs> Praise God. All right, so here we are. So the latter days generally refers to the last half of the 7,000 years. Okay, latter days, as another meaning of it, is the times where the Gentiles took dominion. Okay, that's another then, finally, the uh, last days are more specifically defined or more narrowly defined as the time uh, uh, right before the appearing of the kingdom. Okay, it's called the last days. And then there's finally something called the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord in the Bible was with a capital D. All the prophets, many of them talk about the day of the Lord. It'll be a day of gloom and judgment. And, and uh, what is the day of the Lord? Well, the day of the Lord is the dawning of the seventh day. The seventh day is the Shabbat rest. God showed that. He told our people, six days you work, seven days you rest. He rested. And it's prophetic. Every single week we rehearse the plan of God. The plan of God. the great. So we don't miss it, okay? And of course, God comes and prophetically he fellowships with us. He, he comes as the bride. We welcome the bride in Orthodox Jewish tradition with the candles. The, and the wife does that. And I'm, I'm trusting God to... Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to see that. <laughs> Mrs. Sklar is has done it a few times and we're gonna y'all pray we're we're in process of restoration <laughs> praise god well i'm not required to do that i'm a blood washed gentile well yeah i know but the problem is you're going to have to live in a jewish world especially in the last thousand years and then we're not it's not really clearly defined how i tell you one thing god jesus uh, didn't won't stop being Jewish. He's Jewish. He's of Judah, and he's uh, <laughs> so you've got you got adopted and grafted in to a Jewish eternal family. Okay. Another term. Another word that we don't really understand. Another uh, time, times, uh, periods of time. Uh, the times of Israel. The times of Israel, sorry, began with uh, the giving of the law, according to the rabbis, Exodus 20, Mount Sinai. That's when God married, if you will, the 12 tribes. And, and and he made a covenant, eternal covenant, through the law. Was the law bad? No, the law is not bad. The, Paul said the law is good. The law is the best way to live. It's what's right and what's wrong. One of the greatest problems we have with uh, our, uh, the 21st century here, church is, we, or in the whole world, the culture is, we're lawless. We don't like law. We don't want right and wrong. Well, you can't escape right and wrong. Even my dad was right when he said, I said, well, we're not under law anymore, dad. We're under grace. He says, I don't think so. Well, he was a lawyer. He said, I, you know, and he understood law. He said, no, then God would 
Uh, was God schizophrenic? No, he's not. He's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And he has an eternal son that became a man. God became a man. Forever. But that didn't reduce uh, what we would say is Father God. Or, you know, he's still, he's three in one. Yes. God doesn't change. He just changed because he loved you so much. He became, it's like uh, Billy Graham preached, you know, about, uh, you know, God and, and the ant hill, you know. And, and the ant hills are, the ants are all marching to, you know, to, to destruction off a cliff or something. And How do I reach the ants? I love them so much. There's only one way, but they, 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 the ant can't, the ant can't perceive. We fell. We fell from that place where we walked and talked with God like Adam in the cool of the day. We fell. We became sense-ruled beings. So what happened? God says, what do I do? I have to become an ant so I can tell them how. And then he made a way to restore. There isn't a lot of ways. There's one way. And God did it by becoming a man. And then defeating death and rising from the dead, raising, rising from the dead as the Jewish Messiah, fulfilling every single prophecy of the suffering Messiah, but there's still prophecies to come. The kingdom, the king of glory. Psalm 24, who shall, you know, lift up your gates. The, the, the king of glory shall appear. Who's the king of glory? Well, Hallelujah, the king of glory is about to appear. All right. All right, so I talked to you about the seven days, 7,000 years, when you're looking at the, 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 the times and seasons of God. So that's, that's a time cycle. Latter days, okay. Times of the Gentiles began with kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. When did it end? Did you know the times of the Gentiles has come to an end? According to Jesus, Matthew 24 says, Jerusalem shall be trodden down until what? He says, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So what is he talking about? Well, June, after the Six-Day War, 1967, The city of Jerusalem, for the first time in 3,000 years, came back under Jewish control. And I'll add, never to be, uh, never to be uh, lost again. Praise God for that. And it came out of great war, it came out of uh, everything Satan can do to stop it, including wiping out our people in the greatest tragedy of all, seven years of, of the Holocaust, when a third, nearly exactly a third of the population of Jews in the world were killed, wiped out. And you know who did it? The so-called church did it. That's who's guilty. Well, I don't have time for it. Now, God forgives and he's gracious and merciful. And he prophesied all that too. If you want to read about that, I mean, you talk about the restoration, dry bones, Ezekiel 37. Can these dry bones live? Well, they were, they're literally bones. They're stacked up bones and, you know, in the, in the gas chamber, in the, in the uh, furnaces of uh, Auschwitz, you know, the smell of burning bodies. I mean, that's how, that's the hint. In the Hindu or the, over in India, they, they they burn bodies too. But this was uh, because it was because it was. Uh, oh, I don't have time for that right now. All right, I've got to I've got to continue here. So, so it be the end of the times of the Gentiles was 1967. Well, I don't believe that. Well, that's what Jesus said. You're going to believe Jesus? You're going to believe he meant something else? Well, he said that, now, does that mean that it's it's uh, sudden? No, no. 
we are in an overlap time now. Okay, so how do we know how close <clears throat> the kingdom is? Well, Yeshua talked about it. And all through all the prophets, all the New Testament spends a lot. There are, there are hundreds and hundreds of verses on that. Yes, sweetie, what you need? Oh, I gotta, I gotta get ready to go. I think because uh, uh, Dvorah said I have to go out with. Anyway, so <clears throat> how close do you know? Well, let me talk about as I said. Okay, end of the times of the Gentiles. I'm just gonna kind of read this now because 1967 Jerusalem came back in Jewish control. That means God, the times of what the Gentiles of dominion on the earth during the earth lease of the last days are coming to an end. God is restoring what? The kingdom to Israel. All right. Now, uh, verse uh, number six here, times of Israel starts from the time cycle. Times of Israel starts from Exodus 20, and then it is stopped. Where is it stuck? God stops the clock, if you will, uh, on the times of Israel. And that happened precisely, first of all, there was two exiles, or there is two exiles. The first was for 70 years. Okay, God stopped the clock, because why? Israel was uh, of the first dispersion into Babylon, and that's when Nebuchadnezzar, remember, right around that time? Well, so... Uh, God, it's like, you know, a chess clock. You ever played with a chess clock? You know, you, you, the time is on one pay, player and then you, you hit, the, hit, the, hit the button and then time starts to the other player. Well, there's two times. There's the times of the Gentiles. So <laughs> you stop, uh, God stopped the clock because when Israel's out of the land, when the Jewish natural Israel, that's what I'm talking about, is out of the land, then, uh, then uh, for whatever reason that God chose, uh, he, he, I think it's his mercy that allowed the nations in. Uh, that's why. So he stops the clock. All right. So then 70 years, and then we finally uh, reached um, Tisha B'Av when uh, I think that's August 9th. And Jerusalem was what? Wiped out. Wiped out by the, by the Roman legions. And they, what did they do? They destroyed the temple. Left not one stone upon another, Yeshua said. Well, you know, that's, uh, that happened. 70 AD. Okay, what happened? Well, so the time clock, chess clock started 70 years. And then <laughs> they're out of the land. Why? Because of our wickedness because we were judged by God because of idolatry because he said you shall have no other gods before us before me well all right and uh we didn't as a nation we didn't receive our messiah we rejected him but that was a plan hidden in God for the the salvation of not just our people, but the entire world, or the nations. God is willing that none perish, but all come to repentance. Again, I want to define, the reason I'm trying to define these, these things is because you can't make sense of the end times, the time we're in now, until you understand that God means what he says. And this is what the Bible says. All right, so number seven. Uh, Yeshua refers to the restoration of natural Israel to the land, to the Messiah, and the restoration of all that's been stolen from us, uh, as far as uh, you know, in our in our in the diaspora, that restoration, uh, he calls that the fig tree, in Matthew twenty four, Luke twenty one, I think especially Luke twenty one. Um, <clears throat> all right, so, 
before the end of this 1967, there was another amazing date, which is an even greater date, which was 1948. 1948 was the restoration of the nation. Did the devil try to stop that or what? Oh yeah, of course he did, because he knew. Well, what happened? 1948, the chess clock, God, the times of Israel started again. Why? Actually, it, it came about through a, a, it was a, it was a, it was just like a, a fig tree in the spring, you know, or a tree, you know, you, the winter, it, it starts to sprout. And at first, you know, at first it's, it's just a little, well, the process of how God does everything, seed time and harvest is seed time. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. When he's talking about corn or harvest, but it, it's the process. Well, that's how God, that's how Israel came forth. It started about 18, really, the, this, uh, this lat, what is also defined as the latter days is the time, and it's called also the latter rain. The latter rain is the, is, in the Jewish year, brings in the harvest. It's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a rainy season beginning, and there's rainy season uh, at, in the fall. In the, or, so, um, <clears throat> so God said, uh, in the last days, there's something called the latter rain. Well, the latter rain was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, particularly from about 1880, on and of course it hit full force according to God's precise calendar 19 I mean the the fullness of that uh you know when it officially if you will the 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 that latter rain began was somewhere around 1904 through 1906 uh, when the Azusa street God chose the least of these uh, the one-eyed uh, black preacher William Seymour and after he was rejected by, uh, anyway, because religion always tries to take take the water from Isaac's well, you know. That's the great curse of anti-Semitism. Uh, the story of Isaac and his wells. The rabbis say in the Talmud, and it says in uh, many of the, some of the sacred writings, the saying is this, what the Gentiles do, what the Gentile has always done, because it's a demonic, uh, demonic, uh, it's the, the, the thief trying to steal the blessing of Abraham from his firstborn. So it's the well is yours. Remember every time uh, Isaac dug a well, the, 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 the Canaanite nations or whoever it was, the ites uh, came and stole the well, took the well. Well, and, and the saying is this, and then they say, well, yeah, the water's yours, but I'm sorry, the well is yours, but the water is mine. Well, that's, hap that's happened in the church. Boy, no, <laughs> no one's tried to replace and usurp uh, and suck the water out of the well more than the so-called religious Christian church, same devil, same, same war machine. All right, so here we go. Fig tree. Jesus said, look at the fig tree, the dead fig tree that begins to the bud, begins to blood, bud. And he says, if you, you know, he, but he didn't say just look at the fig tree. He said, Look at the fig tree, that is in this case, and referred to in several places as the fig tree. Uh, in this case, it is now, it means some other things in the prophets, but primarily the fig tree is the, is the good vine that God planted. You know, it's in Ezekiel, the, the bad, good grapes, bad grapes. You know, it's the same, but the fig tree here has special prophetic significance because he's talking specifically about the approaching what's going to happen right before what's going to happen right before the dawning 
of the day of the Lord, the seventh day, a time of trouble, a time of judgment. It's when God uh, cleans out the earth and removes the devil completely. And that's what's happening, okay? So, fig tree, number one. Israel comes back alive into the land. Times of the, uh, then, then the, uh, so that began in 1880 with the Aliyahs and first from, from Russia and Ukraine and then from all, you know, and there were always Jews in, the, in Jerusalem, always. Uh, they never, we never totally left, but we didn't have dominion and control. Others, Gentile nations had the governmental control. All right, so we come back alive to the land, 1948. That's when the fig tree officially begins to blossom, okay? Number two, leaves. Then comes the leaves. He said, look for the leaves. The leaves and then the fruit. Well, what are the leaves? The leaves refer to... Yes, honey. What? What do you want? We have to go now? Ah, well, I'm going to have to, I'm going to just have to unhook. We, you know, Mrs. Sklar has the reins, <laughs> at least for me, because I need it. So, and God sent her. So we're going to have dinner with our friends, Graham and Sabrina Walsh, and I need to be with them. So I have to say, but would you tune in? This is just end of part one. I, I just want to finish this. Uh, the leaves refer to uh, the beginning of the restoration of Israel uh, and in their and the uh, their uh, from being slaves to being uh, to to uh, it's a restoration of wealth it's a restoration of position and uh, primarily America has had the greatest liberty and hasn't stolen it from us uh, over the last 200 years. And so what happens? Well, the blessing of Abraham rises up and they end up ruling every area of culture because of giftings and uh, intellect or whatever, you know, natural things. So, but when you start seeing uh, the fruition of the Jewish people as a race, you begin to see, well, for example, I mean, there's a book called The Jewish Phenomena, which traces uh, particularly the modern uh, miracle of of the blessing the restoration of israel or the blessing of the jewish people if you will uh which is uh one of them one of the uh one of the things uh one of the things this author mentions is um <clears throat> nobel prizes now the no the the this is scientific achievement i mean it's in every almost every realm. But remember, <clears throat> the Jewish population is 0 0.001, maybe two, zero zero two, uh, hundredths of 1% of the population of Earth. That's, did you know this? 40% of all Nobel Prizes were won by this 0.002% of the population. That's called the Jewish phenomenon. What? Why? Well, God is, the fig tree is blossoming. And that makes the, the nations jealous and mad for the most part. Uh, they don't talk about it, but that's, it's, it's because cause Satan hates, hates God, the blessing of Abraham. And thank God the Gentiles received the blessing of Abraham. Yes, it's grace. I, I'm talking about prophetic, Restoration. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When you see, Jesus said, when you see all these things together come to pass, know, that's how you know what? The day of the Lord is coming. All right, well, I have to say, I have to say good night or whatever. I have to go. So the restoration of Israel's the leaves. One more. The fruit, what is the fruit? Well, there's fruit in the land now. I mean, literally, the deserts blossom like the, the whole Negev now is exploding. I have been, my next trip to Israel, by God's grace, amazing, number 50, <laughs> 50 times. I've gone on tours since 1991, 
50 died, number 50. I think even that's significant. Uh, we're going to be going again, I think, with uh, Governor Huckabee. Uh, you know, he's a wonderful tour there. So uh, I play uh, violin, and it's wonderful. But there's no place like home, you know, even even uh, the ruby red slippers, you know. there's no For a Jew, there's no place like home. Well, that's, that's home, eternal home. Even the new Jerusalem is going to come down and be hover over what? Natural Jerusalem. God chose it forever. All right. So I'm going to put a little mark here because I only really preach through. Well, I'm almost, dear Lord, I'm almost done. Well, I, I've got to tell you more. So come back. I'm, if, if I can, I'm going to do it tomorrow. So I'm going to bless you now as God asked me to do. And I'm going to say, uh, we're just going to unhook for now. I love you. Uh, praise God. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his shalom peace. And may the grace of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be yours, dear ones, now and forever. God bless you, Beit Rafa. I'll see you real soon, and we'll, we'll finish this up. I hope you got something good out of this and I gotta I gotta get dressed. <laughs> and and we gotta go. I think we're going to the cracker barrel. <laughs> oh my friends, Graham and Sabrina. What a wonderful oh my. So that'll be a blessing. All right. Have a good evening. Shalom, shalom.